morning everyone and a very warm welcome to this short service on the third Sunday of Lent and also thinking about St. David as well, whose feast day was of course last week on the 1st of March. Just a few notes before we begin the service. Uh, to those members of the Parochial Church Council, there will of course be a meeting on the 15th by Zoom um, at 7.30, so please look out for the link which will be coming to yourselves. Uh, for those who are interested um, in Compline, we are continuing the uh, weekly service of Compline every Thursday evening, again by Zoom. Uh, we had our first uh, last week and there were 11 people in attendance. It's a wonderful service, so please do, um, if you wish the link, then get in touch with Margaret Cross for that and you can then join the service on a Thursday evening. And just to say that one of the things that we will be talking about at the Parochial Church Council meeting on the 15th is um, the resumption of services, which we very much hope will be for Easter Day. But that will be confirmed following the meeting of the Parochial Church Council. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now our prayers of peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so in a brief moment of silence, as we come before God this morning, let us call to mind our sins. The times we have failed to love God, the times we have failed to love our neighbour, and let us ask God for forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for the third Sunday of Pray, Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to listen to our first hymn, that great Welsh hymn, Argluith Arwain Prur Anialuch, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. <laughs>
our two readings, the first of which is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a reading from St. John's Gospel, the second chapter. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. They then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, before my short reflection, uh, we're going to listen to a conversation about St. David uh, between Christina and Luca. Hi, Luca. How are you? I'm fine, Christina. Why do you have a leap? Well, I have a leap because the 1st of March is St. David's Day and he's the patron saint of Wales. Do we have a patron saint? We do. We have St George, and Scotland has St Andrew, and Ireland has St Patrick. What is a saint, Christina? Well, a saint is somebody who believes in God and has a special relationship with him. And uh, perhaps we can all be regarded as saints. Who was David? Well, little is known about David. Some is legend, some might be true, but he lived in Wales over 1,500 years ago. He was born on top of a cliff in the middle of a storm and he lived to be over a hundred. He was a good teacher and he travelled around talking to people about Christ and setting up monasteries. Now he was very good at speaking to large groups and one day some bishops were trying to speak to a very large group and they couldn't make themselves heard. There were thousands of people there and they piled coats so that they could be higher but still nobody could hear. What did they do? Well, they sent for David. He said, I'm not going to preach, but I will pray for you. But when he got there, he did speak and he didn't have to stand on a pile of clothes. What happened was a mountain rose up underneath his feet and he could speak to everybody. And while he was speaking, a dove landed on his shoulder. Christina, one of my friends told me that she has given up chocolate for Lent. What's Lent? Well, Lent is the 40 days before Easter, and sometimes people give things up. But there are other things that you could do. Like what? 
Well, you could do acts of kindness. You could take care of the environment. And I've got these two sheets here, which gives you all sorts of ideas that you might like to do, Luca. You might like to cook your family their favourite meal or go for a walk or phone a friend or make your bed without anyone having to ask you. Or it might just be to treat somebody to a gift. There's lots of things you could do, planting seeds. But you could also be like St. David because one of St. David's things that he said before he died was do the little things. And sometimes doing the little things makes the most difference. That gives me lots of ideas. Well, that's brilliant, Luca. Will you let me know how you get on? Of course. Just a short reflection today uh, to follow that um, sketch between Christina and the puppet. Uh, and making use in my reflection of both the very important readings from today and, of course, Doe Sant, Saint David, whose feast day we remembered last week. Uh, and we had the Welsh dragon flying high from our church tower. And, of course, the daffodils coming into bloom all around us such beautiful heralds of spring, of new life, and of new hope. As part of my Lenten devotions and observance, I'm making use of a book given to me by Christina called Lent and Easter with Saint Benedict. And it has for each day of Lent a piece from Saint Benedict's rule, a passage from scripture, a prayer, and then an action item. On Ash Wednesday, the author asked readers to think back a year ago and to identify any changes or differences between then and now. Well, where to start? Like some of you, of course, I was in church for the service on Ash Wednesday last year, which, as you remember, as you know, finishes with the imposition of ashes made from last year's palm crosses, of course, and with these profound words, remember that you are dust, and unto dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. Little did any of us know just how very different the rest of Lent, Holy Week and Easter, and of course the whole of 2020 was going to be. We are, of course, in the process in different ways of looking back at last year and thinking about and reflecting on what it all meant and means for the future. This is ongoing work at national, diocesan and local deanery and parish level in terms of the church. And all of us will probably be involved in this in some way or other. Lent, however, remains Lent, and today's readings point us to the heart of the very profoundly paradoxical message of our Christian faith by St Paul and St John, and summed up so well in the words of the Collect, pain before joy, crucifixion before glory, through the way of the cross to find the way of life and peace. St. David, whose feast we celebrated last week, his life, I think, exemplified Christ's teachings and those words from today's Collect in a very wonderful way. I was speaking yesterday with a good friend of many years and the former lay chair of our Deanery Synod, Joan Sears, who many of you will know. And she wondered aloud in the course of our conversation whether or not this last year, with all its ups and very considerable downs, had made people in some way reevaluate their lives and what was and wasn't really important in this life. And I think she was getting and hinting at something simpler, more grounded more connected both with God and with our fellow human beings. And as we were talking on the telephone, I immediately thought of Saint David. 
and his lifelong attentiveness to what he called, in Welsh, Ipitha the little things. Those little things that Jesus speaks of in the Gospels, that Joan was wondering about in our conversation, and that we are, I'm sure, all paying much more attention to now, perhaps, than ever before. St. David's uh, life and times were very difficult, uh, were very turbulent in the 6th and 7th centuries. Um, and David did his best across his part of the country in trying to bring and keep communities together in different ways, paying real attention to people and their needs, but in those little things that mean so much. And those little things encompass all aspects of our lives, our faith and our behaviour. And they can and they do mean so very much, as I'm sure we all know all too well. And as I'm sure has been demonstrated so amply in these last months of lockdown and the previous lockdown. So, to finish, as we continue our journey into Lent, let us try, in whatever way we can, to follow David and Chad and the other holy men and women in turning constantly to Christ, away from sin, and doing the little things that we can. Amen. Now we listen to our next hymn before our prayers, the beautiful and reflective hymn, Father, hear the prayer we offer. we come to our prayers, so let us pray. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Father. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic Church throughout the world, and for the mission of that Church, that in faithful witness it may preach the Gospel to the ends of the earth. And we remember especially at this time Christians who are persecuted for their faith. 
We pray for their courage and their witness. In our own diocese, we pray today especially for Bishop Keith, for Rosie and for all members of, his, of their family, as Bishop Keith retires from the diocese. And we give thanks for his faithful and wonderful service to all of us over these last years. And pray for his retirement and for his continuing witness and ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world and for all those peacemakers and peacekeepers. We remember especially the parts of our world where there is still ongoing violence and discord. We pray for the people of Yemen and especially for the children. We give thanks for the safe release of the school children in Nigeria and pray for all those who are being held captive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that the spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. We pray for the poor, for the persecuted, the sick, and all those who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray especially, of course, for members of the National Health Service and the caring professions, and for all those who bring comfort to those who are ill, whether at home, in hospital, in nursing and care. We pray especially for those who are awaiting treatment, operations, and for those who have returned home following periods in hospital, for members of our congregation and community, and for all those we know. We pray for all those who care for them in whatever way, giving thanks for their dedication and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially at this time for all our schools and for those children and their parents and for teaching staff and non-teaching staff, for all who will be involved in any way in the return to school tomorrow of children across the country. Give thanks once again for the improvisation, for the work of parents and of schools in continuing the education of children in such difficult and uncertain times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whom in any way we may have injured or offended and in this season of Lent for grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God. To undertake the little things that mean so much to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, in communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, we bring before you, Heavenly Father, those whom we love but see no longer, all whose anniversaries of death occur at this time, and all benefactors of this church and parish. And we remember especially those who have died recently, praying for the repose of the souls of Barbara Gearing and Roy Manor. We pray for all members of their families, that they may be comforted and strengthened in their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence, with prayer, fasting, and generosity. Accept our Lenten discipline, and when we fall by our weakness, raise us up 
by your unfailing mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And together we pray with confidence in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now may, may Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you, now and always. Amen. Thank you all for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all again at some time virtually or face to face.